Hello YouTube. The Barents Sea is a marginal sea of the Arctic Ocean located off the northern coasts of Norway and Russia and divided between Norwegian and Russian territorial waters. It was known earlier among Russians as the Northern Sea, Pomorsky Sea or Murman Sea. The current name of the sea is after the historical Dutch navigator William Barents. There is a reason I want to bring your attention to the Arctic Ocean in general, and especially, for example, today, to this area connected with the Arctic Ocean, to this very unusual sea. So I want to tell you a little bit more about it itself. It's basically a rather shallow shelf sea with an average depth of 230 meters. That would be 750 feet. It is an important site for both fishing and hydrocarbon exploration. It is bordered by the Kola Peninsula to the south, and I've told you a lot about this very paranormal space. The shelf edge towards the Norwegian Sea to the west, and the archipelagos of Svalbard to the northwest, Franz Josef Land to the northeast, and Novaya Zimbla to the east. The islands of Novaya Zimbla, an extension of the northern end of the Ural Mountains, separate the Barents Sea from the Kara Sea. And of course, I also told you about the Novaya Zimlia and the strangeness around this somewhat forbidden area. You can find it all on my channel. In 2019, researchers were able to witness sounds of unknown origin at the anomalous depths of the Barents Sea. The discovery was carried out by means of a special hydrophone device this device managed to transmit exactly the sounds that come from the depths of several tens of kilometers. Experts have repeatedly managed to find anomalies in the ocean or sea depths, the origin of which confuses world science. Um, for example, not that long ago, a new sound was captured at a six-kilometer depth of the Russian reservoir. According to the generally ex accepted classification, this sound received the train category, which is due to its identity with the uh, rhythmicity of the train in motion. I would say similarity, probably. Some researchers claim that an unknown, mysterious civilization can exist underwater, whose technologies did not, do not allow it to hide, to hide away its presence. One of these researchers is myself, and if you check out my videos about unidentified submersible objects and the paranormal mysteries of the Arctic, you will find more examples, examples of strangeness in its waters. And the links are found in the description to this uh, video. I have quite a few. Previously, by the way, the facts about the phenomenon of huge craters that completely covered the bottom of the Barents Sea were exposed. After some time, theories about the cosmic origin of the anomaly were discarded, since these formations were the result of a prolonged ice age on our blue planet. It was the release of hydrates that was accompanied by explosions that left similar phenomena. Giant craters at the bottom of the Barents Sea, according to scientists, were formed about 12,000 years ago when its territory began to be freed from the ice cover of the last glaciation period. A number of interesting and as yet inexplicable things happened 12,000 years ago. And I also look at this period in my other videos, including the strange finds, be it in Turkey, be it in the Urals, studies conducted by Norwegian scientists have established that these craters were formed because of explosions of methane released from gas hydrates on the shelf of the Arctic seas. Methane contained in gas hydrates is the strongest greenhouse gas and has a significant impact on climate change. Therefore, the active release of methane into the atmosphere is of serious concern to scientists. The volumes of methane emissions over the Arctic seas shelf are comparable to the volumes of methane released by the rest of the world ocean surface. The process of methane release in the Arctic is associated with the decomposition 
of gas hydro deposits at the bottom of the sea. When the temperature rises and the pressure decreases, the hydrates decompose into gas and water. The release of methane is accompanied by a significant increase in pressure, which can lead to explosive events. A feature of methane release in the bar, Barents Sea is, the, is its active release into the atmosphere. This is because the seas of eastern Siberia, such as the Laptev Sea, East Siberian and Chukchi, are very shallow. And by the way, this is the area where, through my research, I found out incredible UFO and UFO sightings, like Laptev Sea especially, and Somebody has yet to explain the waves of UFOs coming there. But who's going to do it? I mean, civilian scientists? Of course not. For methane to dissolve in the water column, a depth of at least 200 meters is required. And the depth is less of the coast of eastern Siberia. Therefore, methane released from methane hydrate deposits is actively released into the atmosphere. It is important to note that the process of warming in the Arctic is characterized by the presence of positive feedback. An increase in the rate of methane releases associated with the thawing of permafrost rocks in the zone of elevated temperature leads to further accelerated warming. This mechanism of an avalanche-like increase in temperatures in the Arctic is called a methane hydrate gun. Methane emissions can cause catastrophic events such as explosions and fires. Fires at oil wells and platforms are usually associated with methane emissions. Several cases of crater formation as a result of methane explosions have been recorded on the Yamal and the Gidan peninsulas. Studies of giant craters at the bottom of the Barents Sea allow scientists to better understand the processes of methane release in the Arctic and its impact on climate change. These studies are of great inform importance for the development of strategies uh, to reduce methane emissions and prevent catastrophic events. Um, and you know what? If you look at the Bermuda Triangle uh, mysteries, I think you will find something very interesting about methane there as well. Again, I've done... A sh my share of videos about the Bermuda Triangle, and I've discussed this as well. But I want to tell you this. The secrecy about the Russian uh, portion of the sea can be explained by the following. Today, the northern fleet uh, of the Russian Navy is based at bases located in the base of the Barents Sea. The main one is, main one is Severomorsk, located 25 kilometers from the city of Murmansk. Several Morsk arose on the side of the tiny village of Vyenga, in which only 13 people lived in 1917. Now Severa Morsk, with a population of about 50,000 people, is the main stronghold of the northern borders of Russia. The Barents Sea is the main base region of the Russian nuclear submarine fleet. Nuclear submarines are capable of being in autonomous navigation for six months, and if necessary, they can surface directly at the North Pole. The Barents Sea is the main base region of the Russian nuclear submarine fleet. Nuclear submarines are capable of this navigation. The water area of the Barents Sea is also serves to develop the, at that time, it should say it served, to develop the military potential of the USSR. An atomic test site was created on Novaya Zemlya and in 1961, a super powerful 50 megaton hydrogen bomb was tested there. Of course, the entire Novaya Zemlya and the territory adjacent to it suffered greatly and for many years. And by the way, about the Novaya Zemlya paranormal phenomena, you can watch my videos. You'll find them in the Arctic section, I believe. Now, but the Soviet Union, you see, despite all the suffering, the Soviet Union received priority in atomic weapons for many years, which, according to the Russians, remains today. For a long time, the entire water area of the Arctic Ocean was controlled by the Soviet Navy. But after the collapse of the Soviet Union, most of the bases were abandoned. But later, the Arctic became fashionable again. And after the discovery of largest oil fields on the Arctic shelf, the issue of protecting Russian northern possessions 
with strategic raw materials came up. Therefore, since 2014, as I have been telling you, Russia has been resuming its military presence in the Arctic. To do this, bases are being unfrozen on Novaya Zemlya, on Katilne Island, which is part of the Novosibirsk Islands, on Franz Josef Land and Wrangel Island. Modern military towns are being built, airfields are being restored. You see, what most people do not realize is the extent of the UFO and USO activity in the area during the past decades. I have collected quite a lot. And like I said, it's featured in my videos, lectures, books. And I'll tell you, there is so much more we do not know and cannot know due to the incredible secrecy there. And I don't think only from the Soviet Union, former Soviet Union, but I suspect that the superpowers know what lurks in the cold waters of the Arctic Ocean. And by the way, maybe whatever lurks in the Arctic waters makes those strange signs that are discovered on the bottom of the ocean. We will look at them in the future. I want to thank you for your attention to my work. If you can help my research, you will find ways to do it in the description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please tell others. I'd like more people to know about it. And uh, please like my videos. Thank you.